uh, that was a great win for us. You know, Bellarmine's uh, they're a tough team to play against. You know, the, uh, I don't know the stat yet, but I want to know how many times they scored with under five seconds on the shot clock. You know, and uh, I thought our guys, you can you have, you have a tendency to put your head down after they make a play like that. It can be disheartening. But really, from beginning to end, I thought our guys did a great job of uh, impacting the ball on defense. I uh, thought our pressure bothered them a little bit. And again, they're, they're as tough as could be and give them all the credit in the world. But this is a great win. Really proud of us. You know, unusual circumstances. Monday night at 8.30 and we were ready to go and understanding what a quick turnaround we have this week. And so for us, it was about being in the moment. I thought we had some really uh, unselfish plays sharing the ball, you know, what we have. Uh, 18 assists and 25 made field goals is a big deal and um, just proud of our effort, proud of this win tonight. Happy to answer any questions. You mentioned the 18 assists, um, you know, that's an incredible assist grade. Right? How much of that is just playing against a, a team that sort of defends the way Bellarmine does and how much of that is replicable going into Portland? I think it's definitely something we can carry over, Brendan. And, you know, it's funny with Bellarmine, you know, they actually give up more threes than they take and you wouldn't necessarily think that. And so for us, you know, we took, you know, twice as many threes as them, but it's because of how they play. They really pack it in and say, you're not getting in our paint. A couple of times we tried to do that, um, they got charges on us. And then finally, once we started doing this, you know, Jalen Blakes did get to the rim on one of those drives and started to soften them up a little bit. But uh, this is going to be the recipe for us going forward, sharing the ball, playing together. And uh, we just need to continue to embrace it, continue to learn where the next read is. And so uh, proud of proud of how, the, how we did that tonight. It's easy to say, hey, the shots went in tonight, so that was great. But was it the passing that, that got to the better shots, the extra pass, to get the, the moral of the three? Yeah, I think, Steve, I, I, I think for us, you always, uh, when you take the right shots, they're going to go in. You just, I believe that. And not necessarily all the time, but it's a law of averages. You know, we continue to take the right ones, and they'll fall for us. And tonight it did. Uh, it helps when you know you have Jacob Grandison on the floor and the way he was shooting it tonight. Uh, but the quality of shot is something we talk about consistently. And tonight, I mean, except for a couple of those, we had great quality in our shot selection. John, we've had this conversation before, but it seems like whenever Jalen Blakes and Jay Grandison come off the bench, good things happen. One hundred percent. You know, Jalen and Jake, they just bring a certain energy. Uh, they play the right way. They're all about winning, and uh, each each day can be each game. Excuse me for Jalen and Jake. It can be a rebound, a bucket, a, a deflection. They just they're winners, and uh, and I feel good when they're on the court. It can be when they're in, we get better, and that's something not a lot of teams have. When you go to your bench, you can get better, and for us. Uh, we have that. Staying with that, that same theme, with all the one and dones and the transfers, how important is it to the program to have a guy like Jalen that you can develop over the course of several seasons? Yeah, Jalen's everything that Duke basketball is about. You know, he's, um, you know, he's got great character, he's got a really good talent, and he really uh, is all about winning. You know, he's a big time competitor. Uh, he's some way that for me, what, what got me excited when we started recruiting Jalen, I didn't know I'd be the head coach, but for us, uh, just he's a guy that you want to go through battles with, you know, you can grow with and, uh, you know, really proud of him. He got better. You didn't necessarily, all of you didn't necessarily get to see him all the time get better, but worked his butt off every day, had a great attitude, competed, went against Jeremy Roach and Trevor Keels and Wendell Moore every single day. And now here he is making a big impact, and I only see that continuing and progressing in his time here. But uh, Jalen's everything that Duke basketball is about. You guys have three games in four days later this week. How, how important is that for your team to prepare for later in the season? How are you getting those younger guys ready for a tournament like that? Yeah, it's a great gauge just to see where we're at right now. And I think it's really important to just take it a game at a time. And, you know, for us, Tomorrow it needs to be recovery day, even though we're flying across country. Uh, we have to get our rest and, and treatments and all that. And then really lock in on Oregon State and go from there and prepare the way we did for this game. 
and uh, it goes quick. We know it's going to be three high-level games no matter what the outcome is, but I'm excited and just want us to go for it. I think we learned a lot in the Kansas game, and we can't go into it tentative or unsure. We need to go after it and, and then see what happens. You mentioned that this was kind of a, a weird game that totally did kind of have the feeling of a trap game kind of leading up to it. So what was your message to your guys to kind of not be looking past this game and kind of keep the foot on the gas pedal against Bellarmine? Yeah, you know, fortunately, uh, you didn't have to convince them how good this team is. You know, they've I think they've seen on, you know, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, the amount of passes they make. And, you know, when you see the results, they beat one ACC team and, you know, they're right in it with another. And, you know, our guys, they understood what a challenge this would be. And uh, so for us, it was just about the preparation and really – Something that we said is just being in this moment. You know, don't go to Portland yet. <laughs> you go to Portland and mentally, and you're going to lose this game. And uh, so I, I credit the Jeremy and our leadership with just really locking in on this game and taking care of business tonight. So Lively only had two shot attempts, but he had two assists, no turnovers this time. So how do you judge where he is offensively? What's what's still out there that we're not maybe seeing? Right? Yeah, he's he's progressing well. I think you can definitely see his passing, and you know when he any time he sets a ball screen, the pressure he puts on the rim, like you can just feel the defense shrink because he's such a lob threat. And the next step for him is just being more aggressive, putting the ball on the floor and. You know, he has a few finishes that are right there, but that comes with time. It's still been, you know, hasn't been too long for him. You know, with Derek, and same thing with Derek. when you miss, I always feel the, for a freshman that preseason time is so valuable. They miss that, and so they're learning a lot right now and can't get down themselves. They have to stick with it and keep going, but I think Derek, every, every single game has just taken uh, big-time strides going forward and the next step is just when you're open, shoot it. When you have a guy closing out, drive it and making those plays. But really happy with how he impacts others on the offensive end just by being a threat on the court. John, you said that they learned a lot from the Kansas game. You as a first-year head coach, how much did you learn from the, from the Kansas game? You know, for me, I, I try to take something away from every game, you know, before evaluating the team and – what we need to do moving forward, I always evaluate myself and whether it be, you know, actions that we run, how we defended certain things, uh, subbing, uh, messaging, and uh, their Kansas game was no different. You know, I felt confident. I felt we, going in, I felt, you know, we were going to win. That's how I go into every game. Obviously, you know what a great test it is and you have respect for every opponent. But for me, I can promise you I'll take away something every game and uh, could be, you know, Sometimes it's been, you know, well, you did this really good and you tell yourself that, but for the most part, I'm pretty hard on myself or remind, I always remind myself things I can do better. John, the game that you knew you were going to have to make a lot of threes or at least get a lot of threes, how important was it for a young team that's still gelling to kind of capitalize on that and make the season high? Yeah, no, it was great. And <clears throat> I think the thing that we're in the process of learning is there are different ways to win. You know, we're, we've played hard, we've competed and all that. Now we have to figure out how to win these games. And so to that, uh, for Bellarmine, that was the recipe. You have to make kicks, knock down open shots, and you have to be really disciplined on the defensive end. It's not going to be the same strategy for, for Thursday against Oregon State. And, you know, whoever you play on Friday and going forward. And so adjusting to what the game requires, uh, that was – a big step for us tonight to, to learn that this is a different game. There are different ways you, you need to win. All right, Coach, thank you. Appreciate right, it. Thank Thanks you, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>